begun. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. Hey guys, I'm TJ, aka Beastmaster. I'm joined with Don Chaos. What up, man? Nothing much, just chilling here. And we're happy to bring you the very first Star Wars Vlogs video. Uh, we created this channel so that we could shoot the shit about the upcoming Star Wars Episode 7 film and everything that comes along with that, whether it be uh, discussions about the original trilogy, the <clears throat> the prequels, you know, the the side stories, the Clone Wars, the you know everything that needs to be discussed, we're gonna fucking discuss it, and you know, call this an intro video because, um, like I said, this is a brand new channel, this is a brand new endeavor, but we hope that you guys enjoy um, watching these videos and of course uh, we love audience participation so if you have anything to add drop them in the comments and you know send us your opinion send us your opinions you know if you guys got questions if you guys got suggestions you want us to touch on the topic let us know all right uh, anything you want to add to our intro Don Chaos all I gotta say is don't be shy to come mentor give us suggestions. Don't be a nerf herder. <laughs> yeah, don't be a nerf herder. Couldn't have said that better myself. All right, well, all right, so Star Wars vlogs. We're going to kick off the first topic here, and we're just going to get this out of the way because this is kind of, uh, this is what's the biggest pressing issue right now, and that's casting characters for Episode Seven. And, you know, I don't know if we're necessarily going to take the time to link up. And, you know, I've, I've found that on other channels we do, you know, hot linking doesn't really seem to, uh, to be much of an appeal. But I may throw uh, links in the description. You can check, you know, where we're getting our information. All right. We're going to start from scratch. And uh, today on Star Wars Vlogs, we're going to rattle through a list of characters that we believe may appear in Star Wars Episode 7. And because they've either been announced or it's been speculated on, um, we'll talk about where we heard this and whether or not we think this is a good idea and what direction this... what, what this means for the direction of the new movies, okay? Um, number one on the list, the one and only... Bad motherfucker Samuel L. Jackson. Have you heard that Samuel Jackson may appear in Episode 7? Yes, I have. <laughs> where the fuck did you hear that? I actually think I seen an interview where he was talking about it. Obviously, the dude's all about it. Why wouldn't he be? Well, I saw it on Clever Movies, and I think it would be kind of obvious because he's admitted that he's a big Star Wars fan himself. Yeah, Samuel Jackson is one of those uh, one of those guys who when his name was attached to the original um, you know, the original continuation, the prequels, uh, we all knew that he was going to come aboard as a Jedi and there was a there was a buzz created just around that alone. And you know, you, one could argue that the buzz that is generated with the potential of, of Samuel Jackson's name being attached to the new Star Wars movie is a marketing ploy, you know, trying to, trying to get uh, this interest in these movies where, you know, there's a lot of reasons to be interested in these new Star Wars movies. And we have not even yet begun to scratch the surface on that. I'm just talking about how fucking cool would it be for Samuel Jackson to be in these new Star Wars movies? Or how ridiculous is it to even 
fathom that because, dude, he got fucking chopped in half by Darth Vader or prepubescent Vader, like, like you know, Vader on the verge, like 18-year-old Vader, or he was, you know, 20-something Vader right before he, <clears throat> he made that full conversion. I saw him kill Mace Windu. How are they going to bring him back? I'll tell you how. They're going to clone the motherfucker. Wasn't it the Jedi Order who commissioned the clones in the first place? Well, it was a Jedi that commissioned it. <laughs> And they went out to El Camino, and they got the cloners to whip them up a batch of fresh stormtroopers, courtesy of Jango Fett. So I wouldn't be surprised if cloning uh, played a key role <clears throat> in the return of any given character, I mean, we're just starting with Samuel Jackson because his name's been thrown out there. And that's the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about how could Mace Windu actually <clears throat> show up in this movie if not as a clone. Now, there's another, there's another, uh, there's another direction they can go in, and that is Mace Windu one with the Force, and appearing as an apparition, just like Obi-Wan Kenobi did with Luke Skywalker in The Empire Strikes Back. So what do you think about that? I could picture Samuel Jackson, all transparent -y and glowy, going, you know, throwing out advice and, and, and suggestions, you know, like... <laughs> but as Sam Jackson. <laughs> what was it that you said that he could say? <laughs> he could he would just be a, like, English motherfucker, do you speak it? Yeah, to who? Jar Jar? <laughs> or if Luke is being all bitchy and moany, Samuel Jackson can go, motherfucker, please. <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. A Sam Jackson, Obi-Wan sidekick over his shoulder, throwing him more than just uh, Jedi advice and force, you know, words of wisdom. He could, <laughs> he could help him out. He can help him out in so many different ways. Um, and, and, you know, and you've got Yoda and Obi-Wan, of course. And they could all, you know, show up together and have these, like, comments from the peanut gallery, uh, you know, otherworldly force version, of course. But, you know, we, we just mentioned his name. Let's, it's, it's time to talk about the possibility of this character's return to the Star Wars legacy, and that is Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> what are the chances of Jar Jar Binks showing up in Episode 7? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> well, all right. Think of it this way. Jar Jar Binks was not uh, an older, wiser Gungan when we met him in Episode 1. He was a young, fumbling kind of, uh, you know, idiot cast away by his own people who kind of accidentally stumbled upon greatness during that, you know, Clone War that they very valiantly, you know, fought against... Well, actually, it wasn't the Clone War at all. They were fighting androids and robots, right? So, yeah, that, that was a fucked up situation because what happened there is... Uh, Jar Jar was now put into a position of power. Like, he was given some sort of uh, congressional, you know, daps of honor. And then later, in Attack of the Clones, when Padme was 
not a, not accessible in the uh, in the court, you know, fucking do nothing Congress that Palpatine was, you know, trying to get his greasy little fingers on. Remember that shit when they're like, oh, too bad Senator Padme wasn't here. And then they look at Jar Jar, and Jar Jar's like, what? You so wants a me to give you ultimate emergency privileges, Counselor Palpatine? Sure! Misa don't mind accidentally giving you a foot in the door and lesser you you know, fuck up the entire empire. Misa, and Misa just doing what's in the best interest, like Senator Padme would if she was here. Oopsie! So, you know, all right, so I'm just saying that Jar Jar Binks is the whole reason that Lord Sidious... Sidious... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I can't say his name. Sidious. Darth Lord Sidious became the fucking emperor of the entire universe all because Jar Jar Binks. Nice one, Jar Jar. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> now, when all shit goes to hell, Darth Vader is christened himself and you know, steamrolling over the Empire. All the Jedi are dead, supposedly. Obi-Wan is hiding off with his head in the ground like an ostrich. No, I'm just kidding. He's watching over Luke, okay? And Jimmy Smits is raising Leia. Now, throughout their childhood and everything, that's a whole blank period in the in, in the movie world anyway and then we come back when you know Luke is coming of age and he leaves his his home planet with Obi-Wan and R2 and C3PO okay and and he sets off in an adventure where he's reunited with his sister and he joins the rebellion against the empire <clears throat> ultimately he he starts his quest to reconcile with his fucking father, who he thought and, was dead. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, the original Star Wars movie is brilliant as it was, you know, and, and we've all watched the interviews with, um, you know, George Lucas, where he talks about how he then had to go back and try to like make everything fit like a puzzle piece to tell the whole story and everything. So Jar Jar Binks apparently is like the one motherfucker who could have prevented this whole domino effect of chaos in the ga in, in the galaxy and, and Palpatine's rise to power. And where is he and all of his people during A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi? I mean, we're, we're introduced to different... Um, ecological worlds and you know we, we were introduced to Endor and we met the, the Ewoks and I remember as a kid I liked the Ewoks because I don't know I had that sense of innocence in me still so that's why I don't really hold it against all the youngins out there who actually like Jar Jar Binks and have been have been introduced to this world of Star Wars with this cartoon character of Jar Jar Binks to usher them in through his comedy and his stupidity, because the Ewoks had that same appeal on me. You know, they're like, do-do-do-do-do, and Princess Leia's all like, oh, you're cute, way, hey, you know, easy, down boy. You know, we're on the same team here. Let's kill some stormtroopers. You know? It's, it didn't ruin it for me. It just kind of, uh, it, 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 it enhanced that whole universe and, um, and this was well before George Lucas went back and tinkered with all the CGI and everything. And, you know, that's a whole other fucking argument on whether or not, you know, George Lucas killed Star Wars with his prequels. Well, right now, the way I see it is, you know, giving Disney control of Star Wars, bringing in J.J. Abrams to direct it, and... You know, having Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher sign on, I guess they're next on this character, uh, you know, list that we're making. I'd say the only thing that could fuck up Episode 7 
is Jar Jar Binks. What do you think? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> he already fucked up everything enough. I mean, and, and we all know that George Lucas loves it, okay? I'll never forget the video I watched about the creation of a, of a cartoon based off of Star Wars where they were given all this control and then they were introducing characters and having them say things and dialogue. And I remember the, crea the creators of this Star Wars <clears throat> animation were worried, or maybe it was actually a game. It was actually, you know, a console game. They were worried that they were making Jar Jar Binks too annoying. And when they went back to Lucas, he was like, no, make him even more annoying. Make make the fans hate him just like just like they treat him in the movie. George Lucas loves the fact that we hate Jar Jar. Now, I don't know if that's because he's sick and demented or if he's a genius. A little of both. All right, we're talking about characters who could appear in Episode 7. Let's talk about Harrison Ford, because Harrison Ford has been announced to have uh, officially signed on, and, I mean, why wouldn't he? Even though he's the one motherfucker who has all the power you know, he could say, nah, I'm not interested, and pass up on it. Something tells me he doesn't give a shit. I don't know. That's, you know what, I want to restart this segment, because Harrison Ford is the shit, and even though I don't think he gives a shit, I think everybody gives a shit. So let me start over. All right, we're talking about characters who could, or, oh, I said that wrong. All right. This is Star Wars Vlogs. I'm Beastmaster. That's Don Chaos. And we're talking about characters who could be appearing in Episode 7. The, next, the beginning of the next trilogy of Star Wars movies. And we all know that Harrison Ford is officially signed on. Is this a good thing? Or are we in trouble, Chaos? What do you think? Well, you have those people who are complaining that Harrison Ford is too old to be an actor. I'm like, how? He's still making movies. Sean Connery, who was the original James Bond, is still making movies every now and then. Ah, but the question is, if they brought Sean Connery back to play James Bond at the age he is now, is that something the fans would be into? And that's a completely... Uh, crazy comparison because James Bond is always brought in as a fresh new face and you know they they change the actor often for James Bond because that that's uh I mean he is always going to be young and dashing and heroic and you know he's got his vices uh, you know um the the way he's you know his martini shaken not stirred uh, you know he's got women in every zip code James Bond is always going to be in his prime or on the verge of, of losing his edge, and therefore, is he going to be back in his prime again? If Sean Connery came back as James Bond, that would be pretty fucking hilarious, but it would be a different type of movie. <laughs> a retiring James Bond and his son is taking over that he never knew of. You know, I mean, they, t they toyed with that idea with Indiana Jones in the Crystal Skull when they had... Uh, What's his name? LaBeouf come in as Indy Jr. And at the end, he was like about to put the hat on. And then, you know, Harrison come by, comes by. He's like, ah, 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 not so fast. Fucking short stuff. Puts that hat back on his own head. Now, I heard the rumor that Harrison held Star Wars for ransom so that he could get Indiana Jones 5. What do you think of that? Well, I did hear something about that. I don't remember where, though. Whether or not it's true, how fucking awesome is that? Where he's like, oh, you want me to jump back into that Harrison Ford role? Well, I tell you what. Only if you let me do another Indiana Jones. How do you like them apples? 
I just love the idea that he's like, look, if you're going to suck me into another trilogy for this huge motherfucking conglomerate of a, you know, empire of, of you know, McDonald's toys and, you know, just everything that comes along with Star Wars. That's what I'm saying. Harrison Ford holds all the chips, and he's not too old. There's no comparison. Sean Connery played his dad in Indiana Jones. It's not appropriate for him to come back as 007, but I think if Indiana Jones was to do a fifth installment, I say bring on his son, bring on his dad. Let's have a family affair. It'd be like Lethal Weapon 5. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It'd be like Lethal Weapon 4. You've seen the Lethal Weapon movies, right? No, I haven't. Ah, you suck. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Those are good movies, though. And I remember they brought in Chris Rock on, on the last one and, uh, you know, introduced him. At the end of the movie, they're one big happy family. It's a great movie. All of the Lethal Weapon movies are decent chapters in a big story. You know, that is Danny Glover and Mel Gibson's uh, crazy cop and, you know, kind of, you know, straight man about to retire, uh, I'm too old for this shit type of cop. <laughs> um, you know, Die Hard is still going. I haven't even seen the most recent Die Hard movie. You know, but good for... Uh, Good for Bruce Willis for keeping that shit going. I think Indiana Jones, it can't get any worse than Crystal Skull. I mean, apparently that's the least popular one, and there's nothing to ruin. I mean, if you're going to say, oh, well, this one was good, that one was good, don't worry. If you're an uber fan of something, don't fucking waste your life worrying whether or not the next installment is going to be good or not. Because let me tell you something, if it isn't good... Life goes on. We've all had to deal with this. If you're a fan of the Alien le Legacy, then you know what I mean. Because after that first Alien Predator mashup movie they made, it all went downhill. And there's life after death when it comes to cinema. Because Prometheus, the prequel to Alien, Ridley Scott, he took that shit back. He took that shit back and he fucking rejuvenated it. And I say that the biggest, you know, worry that I've heard out there in internet land and, you know, in my, in my searches on Star Wars dirt is this big thing, how Disney now owns the right to Star Wars. It's now going to be put out by Disney. Well, we know that Harrison Ford is attached, so that means we're going to have a solid, like, A-level actor anchoring this film in our interest, right? A recurring character that we all know and love. I think he's got what it takes to bring us a performance that we will love. We've got J.J. Abrams who's a tried and true, a true tried fucking whatever the fuck, well-established director, writer. And Disney doesn't have the worst reputation when it comes to putting out movies. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried that they're going to ruin it. In fact... My point is that everyone who's complained that the prequels have ruined anything, you should be psyched that George Lucas has given up the reins of this endeavor. In fact, if if it was up to George Lucas and we had to rely on him to make these new movies, I'd say that we'd all have cause to be worried. But he's given control to the best of the best. I mean, what other movies from Disney are kicking ass right now. The Pirates of the Caribbean movies were all pretty fucking good, in my opinion. I liked them all. They were good. They were well made. Enough said, but there are so many other examples. What do you got? 
well, there's National Treasure, and people seem to forget that Disney owns the right to Marvel, and they've been doing a good job with the Marvel movies. Don't even get me started with the Marvel movies. Name me one of those Marvel superhero movies that sucks, besides Hulk. And I will argue mm-hmm. that it's actually pretty good, and, and it serves its purpose. You know, not every chapter of every story has to be the fucking atom bomb, but let me tell you something. I'm very much looking forward to seeing Thor 2. I have a feeling that's going to kick ass. The first one was great. Avengers was great. I'm a pretty big fan of all these Marvel movies, and I grew up a DC guy. I was all about Batman. I kind of slept on a lot of Marvel. I didn't even know shit about X-Men until the movies came out. And it's not because I wasn't around. It's because I had tunnel vision. I focused on the comics I liked. And I didn't really explore that other universe. So, uh, But you're saying that Disney is behind the X-Men movies? That can't be. Well, they bought Marvel Studios. I think they're putting separate Marvel movies and giving some of them, like, to Fox and stuff. All right. Well, this has brought us to another uh, segment of our video. We'll go back to characters again, obviously, because that's going to be a running segment. Let's talk about the spinoffs. All right? All right. You're watching Star Wars Vlogs. I'm Beastmaster. That's Don Chaos. And we're going to talk about Star Wars spinoffs. I am completely dumbfounded by the idea of a Boba Fett spinoff. A, a movie... I mean, is it, is, it, is it confirmed that we're talking about a motion picture here? Or are we talking about some sort of series like the Sarah Connor Chronicles or Battlestar Galactica type, um, you know, made-for-TV movie, which wouldn't mean that it would be less interesting because nowadays we've got Netflix originals, we've got Showtime series made for mo- made for cable or internet releases. Now it's all fucking gravy when it comes to uh, media and how we ingest it. The fact that they're making a Boba Fett. Bounty Hunter spinoff. How the fuck is this going to work? Well, they could always do it many different ways. They could, like, show, like, some of the people that Boba Fett has, like, hunted down and got paid for killing and stuff. It would be really smart of them to do dual stories where Boba Fett in his prime, hunting down scum in the galaxy, or, you know, just like basically being a missionary for the Empire and, you know, in his adventures in space, have flashbacks to his childhood before and after Papa Jango gets beheaded by Mace Windu. Because that's the whole turning point where, obviously, Boba Fett chose to follow in his father's footsteps, at least in wearing that fucking body armor. You know what I mean? He got his own tint of color. And, you know, when we, when we see Boba Fett in The Empire Strikes Back, he's already got battle scars all over his uniform. And um, I watch a lot of videos that talk about, you know, vintage... Boba Fett action figures, uh, Star Wars Nut 77 for one, is showing off some really awesome uh, gentle giant items and um, prototypes of Boba Fett because he was a character that was actually sold before the character was even developed and originally he had like a rocket pack or a jet pack or a fucking, you know, bazooka on his back or whatever and I mean shit. His first appearance in the Star Wars universe was the Christmas special that only aired once on TV and then never again. (laughs) Because George Lucas hated it. (laughs) Talk about your (laughs) spin-offs. That's tailspin right into the fucking trash barrel. (laughs) But how fucking awesome would it be if they gave us another Star Wars holiday special 
I mean, they could do like the Easter Sunday Star Wars bonanza. And, you know, just like in the original where they told the story of the Wookiees, you know, what could they have this time? A family of Gungans? Could it, could it show Jar Jar's fucking nucleus family all in their little, you know, water bubble? <laughs> and didn't they have cameo appearances from, like, celebrities? Wasn't it, like, Jefferson Starship or something that showed up in the Star Wars special? <laughs> who who could they have in a new Star Wars Easter Sunday special some celebrities that could just show up I would love to see David Blaine <laughs> because he would do some magic tricks and have C-3PO tripping <laughs> and Jar Jar would be like ooh Misa didn't realize that you know you could Restore money after eating it, and then, oh, shit. <laughs> or another one of my favorite actors and comedians, David Cross. You know him from Arrested Development, Mr. Show. I, I just think it would be funny to see him interacting with any Star Wars characters, whether it be a Gungan or Samuel L. Jackson you know, one with the four Samuel Jackson. Because we all know Maze Windu got marked. <laughs> Who did you suggest? David Hasselhoff? Why? Because he's international superstar David Hasselhoff. Everybody knows and loves David Hasselhoff. <laughs> <laughs> and at this point you realize that the only people who can be featured in the Easter Sunday Star Wars special are people whose first names are Dave. So we got to get Dave Chappelle. <laughs> and I could see uh, one with the force spirited Dave Chappelle going back to back with Sam Jackson. I could see that. <laughs> we could have uh, David Bowie show up. He could fucking bubble in just like he does in the labyrinth. <laughs> and be wearing some nut huggers and and you know <laughs> any other Daves who can be in our Star Wars special? Dave Mustaine, you could show up and throw down some riffs. You gotta have a musician, you know. <laughs> it would be cool if David Spade showed up. Because then we could have Chris Farley show up as a spirit <laughs> and and give us a laugh. One more time. You know, if they can make a fucking hologram Tupac, then they can make a hologram Chris Farley. Hologram somebody who actually makes us laugh. You know, because it's like Tupac was cool, but half the people were like, yeah, that's fresh. And the other half was like, mm -mm, nope, I'm not buying it. It's as whack as Jar Jar to me because I know it's not real and it's not perfect. It's good, but it's just not, it's not David Hasselhoff good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that holiday special, but they did make two whole movies about the Ewoks. You know, you had the Caravan of Courage, and then you had the Battle for Endor. And as much as people say, oh, the Ewoks suck, they ruined the Star Wars trilogy... They made two whole fucking spin-offs about Ewoks. Now, I said it before, and I'll say it again. The only thing that could ruin Episode 7 is Jar Jar Binks. But if the powers that be are insistent that we need characters like Jar Jar and Wicket, then go ahead and just make a fucking Gungan spin-off movie. The Gungan Avenger. <laughs> Caravan of Numbskulls. I don't know. That that's derogatory. They're like they're like fish men. They're kind of like I don't even know. Like they got floppy ears. They're kind of like Jamaican water rabbits or something. I don't know what Gungans are. 
I mean, what were the Wookiees? I know their voices are like half lion, half bear. But physically, they're just like Cousin It from the Adams Family. Or like Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bigfoot. And wasn't that great in Revenge of the Sith when you saw all the Wookiees fighting and like Yoda was like, yo, help me out, Chewbacca, hopping right up on Chewbacca's shoulders and flying away. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they really gave us some fresh visuals to go along. They really made up for that old ho ho holiday special with the whole Wookiee family, treating them like they were fucking, I don't know, like elf. You know what I mean? Gave them a they little should... bit, yeah, gave them a better, uh, gave them a better spot in the in the in the galaxy of Star Wars I can see them doing a Gungan movie they probably won't do a holiday spin-off the Boba Fett spin-off is apparently already carved in stone and didn't you say you heard about a possible other spinoff, what was that? That it was going to be a Han Solo one. A Han Solo spinoff movie? Are you kidding me? Now, I don't know who comes up with this stuff, but that's like the big question on whether or not we can handle a new Han Solo appearance in a new movie. If they do a whole spinoff, that means he's got to be really on his game in this new movie to warrant a whole spinoff of him at his age. I'm just saying that the question on whether or not Harrison Ford is up to it has got to be an undoubtable yes if he's up to doing a spinoff series or movie as well. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, obviously Han Solo hooks up with Princess Leia and they have children. Hell, they have twins. Why? Because twins are like genetically in people's family. I mean, Han married Leia, snatched her right out of Luke's hands before they realized they were siblings. They had a little bit of a love triangle going on there back before they lost their innocence before Luke knew who his dad was and who his own sister was. I mean, there was a time when Leia was kissing her brother to get Han jealous. So in <laughs> the spinoff, are we going to hear any witty snaps from Han? You know, something along the lines of, yeah, well, you were making out with Uncle Luke back before we were an item. Remember that? It was on the Millennium Falcon. C-3PO was there. You remember that. Oh, we swept your memory again? C-3PO doesn't retain shit for information. R2 remembers. Beep, boop, beep, beep. Yeah, R2 knows everything. <laughs> he was there from day one. R2-D2, the day one -er. They should really just make a spinoff of R2 and C-3PO and have them go around the universe, and then they could fucking interact with everybody. You know, they could have a different episode. I'm already coming up with, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Lucas, J.J. Um, Abrams, you know, Michael Eisner's ghost. Somebody hit me up. I got all your ideas for you right here on Star Wars Vlogs. We're going to continue to talk about this shit. Um, let's move on to the next topic because I'm tapped out when it comes to, to spinoffs. We're going to do the J.J. Abrams bit. All right. Hey, guys, you're watching Star Wars video. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Star Wars vlogs. <laughs> Have another one. This isn't coffee in my mug. It's Zambuca. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Hey, guys, you're watching Star Wars vlogs on Beastmaster. That's Don Chaos. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. All right, we're going to move on to our next topic, and that is the director of the new Star Wars Episode Seven movie, none other than J.J. Abrams. 
how do you guys feel about that? I'm, I'm, I'm only talking to Don Chaos, but obviously if you guys watching would like to share your two cents on the subject at hand, let us know, please. How do you feel about J.J. Abrams being in the captain seat for the new Star Wars trilogy? Or at least, I mean, I hope that he's going to, I'm in favor of it. So I hope that he sticks with the trilogy and does what he does best. But is everybody in agreement with me? Is this is this an acceptable choice for Disney to give us J.J. Abrams? What do you think, Don Chaos? I mean, are you all for this, or do you have any doubt? Do you have any um, skepticism at all? Well, I have a... I have good faith in him because he did do a good job with the Star Trek movies, and who ever thought you'd see the same guy that did the new Star Trek movies doing the new Star Wars movies? That's something you thought you'd never hear. No, I, I don't think anybody saw that coming. And 20 years ago, if you told a Trekkie that Star Trek movies and Star Wars movies are going to be directed by the same motherfucker, if you told that to a Star Wars fan 20 years ago, hell, 30 years ago, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Not many people today even think about this, but Star Trek started off as a television show, so <laughs> even though it came out first, it was pretty campy, and, it, you know, I mean, Star Wars, as a major motion picture, an indie filmmaker completely changed the world, but it doesn't take away from Star Trek's legacy. And, of course, you've got um, iconic characters, Captain Kirk, Spock, Bones, Scotty, Aurora. All these characters, uh, you know, they would come in, in different episodes, and you know, it's, but it's much, it's a different monster than Star Wars, so... I think when the movies finally started to take off, and I grew up on these movies, okay? So I, I'm not one of these people that chooses a side, except I'm, I'm sure it's pretty fucking obvious that, you know, we, we do videos here on Star Wars vlogs, not Star Trek vlogs. So, okay, we picked a side. But that doesn't mean that we're driving around looking for Captain Kirk's, you know, birthplace so that we can fucking knock over their statue and and piss off the Trekkies like they do in Fanboys. <laughs> I'm not at that level. I mean, we got love for both. But the, the reason why that's so funny in that movie is because there is this animosity between hardcore Trekkies and hardcore Star Wars fans on which one's better. And, and of course, you know, nerds are all over this shit. The reasons why one's better than the other. I mean, you start throwing fucking statistics and, you know, batting averages. I mean, they treat this shit like like sports teams. You know, I'm surprised that there isn't any fantasy Star Wars leagues going on right now like they have for sports. I always love to think about how you could apply that same goofball type of... Uh, I don't know. I mean, they're doing it for money, right? Is a betting thing. I mean, we should we should really be start. We should start making a March Madness bracket right now to see like who's gonna win in the end. Of course, that's just me thinking about characters. But this is about J.J. Abrams. I, for one, am a huge fan of Lost. It's kind of. Uh, one of the things that I nerd out on, I watch Lost and very awesome storytelling. I'm a huge fan of Fringe. We all know that J.J. Abrams, as a director, he's given us some of the Mission Impossible movies. He's worked hand-in-hand -hand with Steven Spielberg, you know, like Super 8. But it really does blow my mind that this guy who, you know, when he was given the, the, the rights to make Star Trek over again, I was excited about that. I mean, you're a fan of the new Star Trek movies. And I still love the old movies. That's a loyal fan right there. 
one of the things that I've come to terms with as a as a hardcore fan of Star Wars, a pretty pretty big fan of Star Trek. In order to maintain my own sanity, I have become numb to all of the criticisms and insults and ass aches towards either one of these franchises. In fact, it's kind of impossible not to embrace these criticisms. And like I said before, George Lucas loves it when fans hate on certain characters. If anything, that, that hate for Jar Jar Binks is just as valuable to him as people's obsession with lovable characters. As crazy as that sounds. I'm going to turn this back on J.J. Abrams and say that I, I do enjoy his work. I think that this whole franchise is in good hands with him as long as he doesn't rape us in our eyeballs with lens flare too much. You know, hopefully that's the Star Trek thing he does, and that'll be the difference between, you know, these two, these two different, um, you know, projects that he's embarking in. Everybody who's a fan of Star Trek is going to walk out, like, hypnotized. When I leave Star Wars movies, I want to feel inspired, and I want to feel like a kid again. So there needs to be a healthy dose of that childlike innocence. But then there also needs to be something deeper and darker. And I think that J.J. Abrams does a good job of, of uh, you know, presenting compelling character stories, you know, and, and especially the way he weaves a story and makes real dramatic sequences out of, uh, you know, well, all I'm saying is that J.J. Abrams is the shit, so haters can can suck it up. Y'all know people that are hating are just creating as much of a buzz as people that are showing appreciation. So um, we'd love to know what you think about it. J.J. Abrams. Um, the video will stand as is. When we learn more, we will talk further. But that's where we're at. So, what else do we got? Any last-minute topics? Um, not that I can think of right now. We didn't talk about Mark Hamill too much. Well, there we go. Let's let's go back to characters. All right, new segment. Hey guys, you're watching Star Wars vlogs on Beastmaster. That's Don Chaos. We're gonna go back to character speculation. And this time, we're going to talk about Mark Hamill. Now, Mark Hamill was in the original Star Wars movie. What was the name of the character he played? Um, oh, Luke yeah, Skywalker. Luke Skywalker, the fucking main character. Hope no one out there was experiencing tip of the ton syndrome just because I pretended like I didn't know who Mark Hamill was playing. Mark Hamill supposedly has not been contacted by J.J. Abrams to repraise his role of Luke Skywalker. What's up with that? Who knows? Is it because he's not as desirable as Harrison Ford as far as uh, current actor big dick status. I mean, do we not care about Mark Hamill anymore? Mark Hamill has gone on to do some pretty amazing things in his career. One, he was the voice of the Joker in the animated Batman series. I, I guess only Batman fans know about that. Is that, not, is that not a Star Wars-wide known fact that Mark Hamill has been holding it down as the Joker? What about that amazing portrayal at the end of Jay and Silent Bob's Strike Back when they're filming their movie and he was Cockknocker? <laughs> <laughs> that, 
That was a pretty fucking epic cameo appearance, as was Carrie Fisher as the nun. <laughs> <laughs> See, I like how those two were involved in Kevin Smith's movie, highly inspired by Star Wars from the title all the way down to, you know, character and plot and a lot of jokes. Star Wars is like the most parodied fucking thing in the universe, man. You ever see, um, what's that movie, um, where they make a porno? Oh, I haven't seen it, but I heard it's funny. Yeah, it's great. It's a great movie. Good fun. Anyways, they actually end up doing like a Star Wars parody porno where they're all dressed up. I mean, obviously... If you're gonna if you're gonna make a porno with your friends, you're gonna do a Star Wars themed porno. I feel like there's gonna be a Star Wars themed everything before our planet is fucking destroyed by the Death Star. Did you know that more people petitioned to have a real Death Star built than number of people who signed up for Obamacare on their new website? <laughs> <laughs> Even there are more people. <laughs> I don't know what more people want a real Death Star than they want fucking health coverage and Obamacare. <laughs> so if Mark Hamill isn't invited to be in episode seven, does that mean that Luke Skywalker is not going to appear in episode seven? Look, I'm just gonna rattle off a few theories. One is that they could really focus on Han Solo and Princess Leia and their new family, the Solo twins, whatever siblings they got. But isn't there a plot line that they may go towards? And without giving any spoilers away, Don Chaos, isn't there a way that maybe Luke Skywalker's character could be absent? in episode 7, and then show up in episode 8, kind of like, oh, shit, it's Luke. They brought him back. And so, in other words, to not have Mark Hamill's name attached to episode 7 is a long-term fake-out. Because how can you continue the Star Wars story without including... Luke motherfucking Star uh, fucking Skywalker, Star Wars Walker. I can't even fucking talk. It's so ludicrous, the idea of not having Luke in there. And, you know, again, all you nerds out there that know all the extended universe stories, I didn't read them. I'm going along the lines of long-term fan of the movies, seen all the movies millions of times, I know where the characters started and left off, and everything else that could have, would have, should have happened was all written in books. And now whatever they choose to put in the movie is going to be the end-all, be-all of the Star Wars universe, according to slackers like me who don't want to read. Okay? So that being said, what do you think, Don Chaos? Luke Skywalker, to be or not to be included in the continuation of this legacy? Well, and I think they're maybe going to, they're trying to like work out paperwork, because who doesn't want to see an older, wiser Jedi Luke? I think that'd be cool. Well, you know, we started off really not knowing shit about Darth Vader. Because remember, he started out as just kid that didn't know anything. Now it would be cool to see him wiser and more mature and stuff like his dad. Yo, uh, wiser and more mature like his dad? His so dad I, who's like, oh, you didn't reach your quota today? Force <laughs> joke! <sighs> Pray I don't murder you anymore while you're unconscious. Take him away. Who's the nearest fucking stormtrooper? You? You are now in charge. He's like, ha ha, thank you. Glad to be number two to your number one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, real mature there, fucking Anakin. Or more mature than it. 
is what I meant to say. <laughs> All right, well, if they do bring back Luke, I think that they gotta they got to take him down a dark path. I think he needs to join the dark side. And isn't there a storyline where he does that? Well, and he actually ends up having kids himself. Oh, okay. So now we're talking about cousins, right? If you got the solo, the little Jedi solos, little Jedi solos, they're probably going to be like teenagers. They're probably going to... That's where all the sex appeal is going to be, by the way. We're Prince. looking forward to um, 16, 17, 18-year-old Jedis, all right? These guys, and of course, they're all going to be cast by twenty-somethings. You know, just like you had your nineteen-year-old Leia, right? Ooh, you a little short to be a stormtrooper, huh? I mean, she had those sexy buns. And then, of course, we look back and we see that Anakin, the smoothest twelve-year-old in the world, hook, line, and sinker to Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman, who hadn't even fully developed her boobs yet, wasn't even actually physically looking like a woman, still in her girlish teenage years, she's robbing the cradle. Okay? Later on, now she's pregnant. Anakin doesn't even tell Yoda or Mace Windu. They all have their little Jedi circles, their drum circles. Nobody can tell that Anakin fucking busted a nut. <laughs> Nobody can tell that there's a little Jedi fetus growing over there in Padme's belly. Nobody Obi -Wan realized Obi -Wan. that she... <laughs> all right, hold on. I've lost all my fucking light. You guys can't even see me. So <laughs> tell me what you think about this, man. I mean, obviously we're going to have some sexy Jedis and it's not just going to be the ladies. Obviously, there's going to be they're going to cast like you know Justin Bieber or Zac Efron to be one oh. of the solo. <laughs> no. What do you mean no? Like you have a fucking say? I think that would be too weird. <laughs> well, remember George Lucas isn't involved. Or at least he doesn't have the end all, like the the last say. And J.J. Abrams has a really good track record for casting attractive people who also have acting abilities. All right. So that being said, uh, I, again, I've said it before. I think we're in good hands. But I mean, what are we, what are we talking about here? We're talking about Mark Hamill. We're talking about the idea of Uncle Luke. All right, maybe he has a couple kids. Then he turns to the dark side, and now you've got little Skywalker and the little Solos maybe working together. You know, maybe maybe Han, who by the way is the only uh, dude in this family without the Force. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Leia. She knows how to use the Force. Leia's got the Force. Luke's got the Force. I'm sure the kid's got a touch of the Force. And I'm sure that that's going to have Han a little bitter. <laughs> I could see him being, you know, the elder, the, the older, still slightly screwed, you know, like, nah. You, you fucking twerps in your force. You get that from your mother. <laughs> <laughs> so, it'll be interesting. And uh, I say let's do one more character study. Let's talk about Carrie Fisher. We might as well. We'll start a whole new, ser uh, a whole new segment for her. Hey guys, you're watching Star Wars Vlogs on Beastmaster. That's Don Chaos. Say what up. What up? And we're going to continue discussing Star Wars characters that could be in Episode 7. This time with the focus on 
Princess Leia. The lovely, the talented, the old as shit. They're all pretty old now. Except, no, we, sh we shouldn't start it off like that. We need to give her more props. I had such a crush on her as a kid. All right, let's start over. Hey, guys, you're watching Star Wars Vlogs. I'm Beastmaster. That's Don Chaos. What up, man? What up, though? So we're going to discuss uh, more characters that could be in Star Wars Episode Seven. This time we're going to talk about Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher. Now, I've heard uh, one of my favorite comedians, Louis C.K., talking to uh, an actress, Susan Sarandon, and he told her that when he saw the movie um, Little Shop of Horrors, oh, no, wait, I'm sorry, that's not the right movie. What's the movie that she's in? Rocky Horror Picture Show, that's what the movie was. Apparently, Rocky Horror Picture Show was the first movie that he had ever seen a woman in her underwear. And I'm pretty sure he said that, you know, he, like, jerked off for the first time and he was thinking about her in her underwear from that movie. Now, the only reason I bring this up is because as a 30-something-year-old guy, I remember thinking that Princess Leia was pretty cute. And I had a crush on her, much like I think Louis C.K. had a crush on Susan Sarandon as a kid. And we all know that Carrie Fisher is not 19 years old anymore. And yet we all have this memory of her in her Star Wars prime, not just in A New Hope, but also... Empire Strikes Back, her love story with Han, some pretty intense stuff. You know, she's kissing her brother. Now, again, we don't know that she's brother. She, We don't know that, you know, she's related. We don't know any of that. Neither does she. This has been the source of many conversations in my lifetime. And Return of the Jedi when when she finally finds out that she's Luke's sister, remember Han's all kind of jealous, like, oh, oh, you can tell Luke, huh? But you can't tell me? Hmm. You know, that, that right there is, like, so mind-blowing. I couldn't believe it, you know, that, that she actually has the Force. This whole time, and she didn't know it. Talk about a late bloomer. I mean, even Yoda was like, you know what, Luke? You're a little old to be training as a Jedi right now. But in the modern age, since they don't start you right out of the fucking Jedi fetus, apparently back in the day, as soon as you're born, you got Yoda fucking slapping a helmet on you and forcing you to battle with lightsabers in, you know, kindergarten class. That's crazy talk, man. You let a fucking 300-year-old frog put a fucking deadly weapon in your little kid's hands. And that's how Jedi are trained for, like, thousands of years until all of a sudden the Chosen One comes and murders everybody, takes over the fucking universe, hand-in-hand -hand with Palpatine, all right, I'm getting off topic here. What I'm really trying to say is that Princess Leia in her slave bikini in Return of the Jedi played a significant role in my former self learning about my own boner. That's all I'm going to say. And, and I'm sure that there's lots of people out there who can relate with me when they say that they had a huge crush on Princess Leia or Carrie Fisher. Now, I've watched a lot of actresses grow up. You know, as I was a kid, I seen young actresses, and I thought to myself, you know, they're going to be something when they grow up. I bet they're going to be hot shit. 
You know, I can just see their career unfolding in front of my eyes. I could tell it was going to happen to Kirsten Dunst when she was kissing Brad Pitt in Interview with a Vampire. Kirsten Dunst is my age, okay? And I remember all the fucking attention she was given for that. And then she grows up and she starts doing more movies. And before you know it, she's Mary Jane in the, in the Spider-Man movies. How cool is that? Natalie Portman, she was in uh, The Professional. She's probably like 15 years old. Who would have thunk that she would grow up to have a lesbian sex scene with Mila Kulitz from uh, Family Guy in that 70s show in the movie Black Swan? She was also in Mars Attacks when she was like a teenager or something. I forgot about that one. That's a great Tim Burton movie. And it's funny. <laughs> we should do a segment on what it would have been like if Tim Burton would direct the Star Wars movies coming up. <laughs> How crazy would that be? <laughs> You'd have Darth Beetlejuice. <laughs> What do you know? The force it surrounds and binds us. Suck my dick, honk honk, or something like that. <laughs> All right, well, look. We're getting off topic. We're trying to talk about Carrie Fisher, except I think that this inappropriate humor is right up her fucking alley. She would love that. I mean, think about all the funny things that she's done. Like the nun role in, you know, Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. Where, uh, you know, Jay is trying to eat her out while she's giving them a ride. She's a great sport. There's a movie called Drop Dead Fred that she's in. I fucking love that movie. And she's great in it. Are you familiar with that, Phoebe Cates? Nope. Mm. It's good shit. Great movie. If you haven't seen Drop Dead Fred, check it out. Carrie Fisher's got a nice role where she's like exercising, power walking while smoking a cigarette. And she's like the, the best friend to the lead role, Phoebe Cates, you know, who's got this imaginary friend, Drop Dead Fred. In a sense, it's kind of like her very own Obi-Wan Kenobi. Somebody talking to her who no one else can see. Which makes me think, if we've got an Episode 7 scenario with Han Solo and Leia as mother and father to a gang of young Jedi, I mean, we potentially can see some pretty interesting, like, family dynamics, right? I mean, there's going to be some sort of chaos, no pun intended, Don Chaos, but there's going to be some sort of chaos that ensues, right? That's going to fuck shit up, send them off on an adventure. they got to have their own coming of age. They've got to have some tragedy in their life. I hope they don't go the route of, you know, giving them a tragedy like Anakin had. I don't want to see Princess Leia get killed and then the Solo clan has to, like, def fight back to, uh, you know, defend her honor and uh, get revenge. I don't want to see anything bad happen to Princess Leia. She needs to be a sweetheart. She's older now. So now she's in the role of mom. And I can see her, like, laying down the force. Like I said earlier, Han Solo doesn't have the force. <laughs> so I can see her, like, you know using the force against him <laughs> in some way. She could, like, telepathically, like, shut him up <laughs> or, you know, fucking make the remote control fly over to her so she can change the channel to what she wants to watch. And he's all like, shit, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the kids want to take the fucking hovercraft for a spin, and she's like, 
not without the keys, you're not. And they're like, ha-ha, we got the keys copied. And she's like, uh-uh, because I just took out the fucking engine caskets with my mind. I just force blocked you from breaking the curfew. <laughs> Who knows, man? Carrie Fisher is uh is not exactly looking as good as she used to. I mean, we all get old, but I think it's pretty well known that guys age better than women, generally speaking. You know, Sean Connery, he could come back as Indiana Jones' father and and probably give a compelling performance. If Carrie Fisher is going to do the same thing, you know, she needs to have a good dialogue. I think J.J. Abrams uh, will do the right thing and give her, give her a character that will be a positive representation of Princess Leia in her entire lifespan. I don't want to see her life go to shit. I don't want to see Princess Leia get killed. If anything, kill Han. He can take it. I think the fans care more about Han's legacy anyways, and I feel like he's always going to have the, the shit end of the stick because he doesn't have the force. I mean, he always was a kind of, uh, you know, a shady guy. He's a smuggler. He's got a, that sense of humor, but it's kind of like, you know, he's a scumbag. So he hooked up with a princess. There's, there's going to be some sort of... Uh, some sort of dynamic between the two of them, you know? Are they sick of each other? Are they are they space divorced? <laughs> you know what I mean? Did did Leia and Han get divorced, and now Leia like moved in with Lando Calrissian, <laughs> and, and Lando is the Solo twins' fucking stepdad? Oh, I bet fucking Han Solo would love that. He's like, that's what you get for stealing the Millennium Falcon from me. Now I'm fucking Leia. <laughs> no. She hooks up with Jar Jar. Interspecies galactic fever. <laughs> the, the solo siblings have this one fucking younger half-brother, half... -brother, half you know, fish rabbit. <laughs> Who has the force nonetheless? <laughs> Misa, Misa choked my own dick off without using Misa hands. Wee! <laughs> All right, again, much love to Carrie Fisher. You know, I... If she isn't going to be in the new movies, I just hope it's not because, like, you know, Harrison Ford's sitting down with the kids and they're like, yeah, we wish Mom was still alive. It's too bad Luke turned to the dark side and killed her. You know? And then, like, Luke is now whatever, Darth Skywalker, or whatever this fucking name is, when he, when he puts his daddy's helmet on and fulfills his destiny. And then has his sister standing over his shoulder all the time, you know, cussing him out, making fun of him. You know, like siblings do. I, I can't, like, come up with the, the one-liners, but that's what all the spirits do. They, Luke, use the force. Like, I am the wiser one. I know what's good for you. I have dirt that you don't have. You know, Leia could be like, Luke, just kill yourself. It's a fucking party up here. Mace Windu is breakdancing. You know? Everybody, Yoda is, like, doing the ice luge. I don't know. They're playing fucking cups and balls and... You ever see the movie This Is the End with no. Jake Rico? No. Um, you should. It's hilarious, and I don't want to give it away. 
but let's just say that there's a Shangri-La experience at the end. You know, it's kind of like the celebration in Ewok Village at the end of Return of the Jedi, right? Just imagine that up in heaven. But I don't think when you're one with the Force, you need to actually leave the planet that you're on to have your party. I mean, there's all these multiple planets anyways. you got Endor, you got Hoth. We're going to have to wrap it up and say we'll join you. Uh, you can join us next time on Star Wars Vlogs. You got anything for us before we end this shit? Nope, I don't. All right. Well, may the Force be with you, and uh, we'll catch you later. Later. See you.